が僕の感情だ身を委ねるとこうなる化け物かてめえ Okay, Mob Psycho 100 fans, I hope you're ready because everybody's favorite middle school outcast esper, Kageya Mashigeyo, is coming back for a second season. And personally, I couldn't be more excited. Now, while we wait for season two to come around, Netflix decided to bless us with a live action remake of the anime. But is it good enough to hold us over until the return? Let's talk about it on Bro Takuza. Konnichiwa, snitches. I'm B, and you're watching Bro Takuza. Okay, so 2016, that's when Mob Psycho 100 first came out, and it was a surprise hit, which was no small feat because just the year before, One Punch Man came out, and that was a runaway hit. And that success was so astronomical that it could have easily relegated Mob Psycho 100 to being the redheaded stepchild of the One Family. But here he is, he's coming back for a second round. Now, Studio Bones, the people who gave us some great anime like, Oran High School Host Club, Full Metal Alchemist,、um, My Hero Academia, just to name a very small few, they're getting the entire crew back together to give us the conclusion of Mob Psycho 100, which was just announced not too long ago. And that's pretty amazing, guys, because with the director, the original director, Tachikawa Yuzuru, coming back, it's pretty safe to say that we're not headed anywhere close to a letdown. But speaking of letdowns, we still have to wait on a season two premiere date to be announced. Which means we have plenty of time on our hands to do one of two things. We can either go back and watch season one of Mob Psycho 100, or we can check out Netflix's live action adaptation, which definitely took some liberties to say the least. Now, I know it's not wise to, you know, expect much from a live action adaptation of an anime, but out of all the disappointments that we've experienced recently, there was one adaptation that had me convinced that the tide was finally, finally starting to turn. Now, you may have heard of a great little time travel anime by the name of Erased, which received a lot of critical acclaim. It was an amazing anime and it was very, very well written. And Netflix picked it up for a live action remake. And actually, to my surprise, it was really, really good. Now, why was it good? Well, in my opinion, it's because they really took their time with this story. You know, they gave it the care that it deserved. Instead of trying to shove 12 episodes into one film and sacrificing those key pieces of the story, All for the sake of runtime, it was just really, really fleshed out in series form. So, when I saw that Mob Psycho 100 was going to get the same treatment, I thought that there was a lot of potential there to be had. Like I said, I thought. So, let's look at a comparison of the anime and live action versions of Mob Psycho 100, starting with something that really, really got me hyped up about this anime, and that was the music. Most specifically, the opening theme. Take a listen. It's great, right? I mean, it's simple. Who knew you could have so much fun just counting? This song is like if everyone on Sesame Street took shots of sake or something. It, it's simple, like I said, but it got you pumped as the singer inched closer to 100 and you just really got excited to watch the show. Now for the live action opener. Take a listen. Right, nothing, right? Yeah, thanks, guys. So the live action's already losing me from the jump. But now let's look at the characters. Now, keep in mind that this story takes place in middle school. Now, look at the characters from the live action adaptation and tell me what you think. I mean, here's Mob, who looks like he should be in college at least. But take a look at the guys from the bodybuilding club. Like, was this on purpose? These guys look like they're a solid five years from collecting Social Security or whatever the Japanese equivalent of that is. Like, I didn't understand it. Like, were all the teenage actors in Japan already booked? Not a single person in this show. Looked like they were under 30 years old, except for Yuki Yoda from Nogizaka 46, who I felt like was just a, a fan service casting choice just to get the fans of that group to watch this show. I don't know, but either way, it just it didn't work for me, you know? I felt like the casting was just off and it was just really, really weird. Even with Atsushi Arai from Kamen Rider bringing in some professionalism to the show, or at least trying to, I just felt a little disappointed with the people that they assembled to portray these characters. Although, I was not mad about Kasumi Yamaya as Tome Kurata for obvious reasons. Okay? No, but seriously, as an actor, you should be able to expand on a character and do those subtle things that bring it to life and, you know, add a new dimension that makes it fresh for us again. Because you got to keep in mind that we as an audience, we've already seen the anime, we already know the story by heart. 
we want to feel like we're watching it for the first time all over again. And I felt like that's what that little girl, uh, her name is uh, Rinka Kakihara from Erased. She, was, uh, she played Kayo, and she's only 13 years old, and I felt like the way she portrayed her character was perfect, and she really gave it a new dimension. And I just really felt disappointed that these adults from Mob Psycho 100, the live action remake, they couldn't do half of what that little girl did, and it was really sad to me. And there's another part of the anime where we saw how much Reagan really, really cared about Shigeo. This, this entire time we thought he was just a phony scumbag who was taking advantage of Mob and his abilities for his own personal gain. We saw how much he saw him like a son and cared about him. And I felt like that was a really redeeming quality of that character and that anime. But it just didn't transfer over to the live action and I felt like there was no redeeming qualities at all. Now, I know that the original writer of Mob Psycho 101 was excited to see the live action, but I'm wondering how he feels about it now that it's out. Because for me, it just fell a little flat and I just wasn't into it at all. And it felt like Netflix wasn't even into it because about halfway through the series, I stopped getting English subtitles as an option. So I had to rely on my wife to give me translations or just use my memory of the anime to figure out what was going on. But that was my opinion of it. I didn't like it very much. I want to know what you guys thought. Did you see it? Did you like it? Did you hate it? Did you think it was okay? Leave me a small little review in the comments below. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Uh, come back. I'm going to be doing some great stuff on this show, on this channel. Um, we're going to be doing anime, video games, lots of Japanese entertainment. I figured, hey, I'm in Tokyo. I live here. I'm going to take full advantage of it. I'm going to do some things that maybe can't be done by other guys who do anime channels in the States. And we're going to do some fun stuff for you guys. So I hope you enjoy and come back. But until next time, I'm B. Sayonara, suckers.